The film explores the issue of spatial justice and the creation of a new infrastructure of cultural, social, and community spaces based on equity, inclusivity, and mutual aid. Black Lives Matter and activism against racial injustice have become the largest social movement in the last decade. Across the world, deconstructing colonial legacies and institutional racism became the preoccupation of many. But only now are we starting to talk about social justice from a spatial lens, questioning who we celebrate and elevate in our built environment, and alternatively, who we silence and erase. In Hackney, we've mapped over a dozen accounts of spatial injustice in the last century, with key community hubs being wiped away and the very communities that make up the area ending up completely disregarded. Despite the rich diversity of the area, ethnic minorities remain disproportionately affected by a decade of austerity. These inequalities have been further exposed by the pandemic, exposing extreme poverty, lack of community support, job insecurity, and unaffordable housing. A network of clubs, such as the Four Aces in Dalston, gave exposure to the new London bands. Design and architecture are not neutral. They can be complicit in propagating and sedimenting systems of oppression. As designers, we believe we must do more to fight systematic inequalities. We cannot continue this way. It's time for change. It's time for Hacking Hackney. Our vision is to reclaim the streets, spaces and power in Hackney and place it into the hands of diverse communities of colour. We are offering a new model for a moving, adaptable, multi-layered, iterative network based on an alternative notion of land ownership, working at different scales and temporality. Organisations are connected in a cooperative structure of mutual aid and support funded by a community wealth fund. A community land trust acquires and distributes spaces to reflect the individual needs of each organisation or community. Here are some of the stories. Straker Station, currently a bus depot allocated for residential development by Hackney Council, is a central node of the governing community land trust. The existing structure of the station provides flexibility, allowing the building to adapt according to funding and need. It's a common space run by the community and works to coordinate resources for mutual aid, capacity building, leadership and community resilience. To build intergenerational connections, there are spaces for communal cooking and the maker studios which activate and help steward the central space. Celebration and exchange are fostered by negotiation over the central public realm. The station also works as a community group incubator, providing space for support and training. However, the station is not the end product, but serves to support the fleet of mobile programmes and wider network. Both the mobile programmes and the station play an important role. This is the case for Account, a research group looking at policing in Hackney. This image shows the float visiting Erswick School, hosting a transformative justice workshop between young people and the police, where grievances can be shared. Account's recent report highlights how workshops should be held in many locations and perhaps through a movable venue like a bus, allowing a localised service. The report also highlights the need for a third space, separate to the council, run by local residents who are paid to build trust, resilience and cohesion between generations. This meant passive surveillance was a key driver of the station's design, with easy overlooking built in to the group incubator offices. Lawa is the only refuge against gender-based violence in Europe that is by and for Latin American women. Currently, Lawa's base provides emergency accommodation, therapy and community support. In the hub, they will benefit from a celebration space hosting their events. It will offer workshop spaces and a safe space for the Changemaker project. This space also operates as a dance studio, costume workshop and print shop. Lauer's Float allows women and children to come together and get free legal support along with cultural workshops. It is a celebration of black and Latin culture through dance, music and food. In collaboration with Sister Space, 
The float also acts as a cover that will allow women and children in need to have access to essential support services. The mobile structure also aims to cast light on the spatial injustice faced by specialized domestic violence charities. Sister Space was created following the brutal murder of Valerie Ford, which highlighted the need for specific domestic violence services for black women. Sister Space remained in unsafe premises in Clapton for five years before being temporarily relocated to Mare Street. After months of dispute and despite strong community support, Sister Space were evicted from their Mare Street premises on January 17th, with the council failing to provide them a safe space. There has been strong community support for facilities for Sister Space to be included in the redevelopment of 55 Morning Lane as an alternative to the council plans. Our proposal will therefore be developed on this site, forming part of our CLT Justice Reinvestment Strategy. Developed following engagement with Sister Space, our design offers a safe, protected and discreet space for the charity on a ground floor unit of the Morning Lane site. Its facade contains frosted glass motifs, inspired by those found in traditional Gurunzi houses across West Africa as well as sister space symbols, acting as discrete indicators of the refuge. The space is designed to be rather flexible, to ensure sister space can adapt it to their needs. It offers new offices, an openable group activity space, as well as more secluded spaces for individual counseling and respite. It also contains an intimate living room space, providing constant access and support to the survivors. By contrast, the hub acts as the public face of Sister Space, where, in collaboration with Lawa, they can engage in domestic violence awareness, public workshops, and offer legal advice to a larger audience. Instigated by our mobile interventions, our next design proposals reclaim vacant spaces for celebration and healing. This becomes the Cutie BIPOC Fashion Network, spaces that are co-created with queer and trans POC groups and artists working with decolonial art and fashion techniques. The float finds and reappropriates these empty spaces. The float is centred around a core workshop space inspired by the programmes of Centerprise and the women's anarchist Nuance Cafes, providing therapy, making space, and stages. When the float leaves, its elements remain to form more permanent events. In this space, a weekly queer and trans POC fashion celebration takes place. The event engages groups which are working with reclaiming the queer and trans identity through fashion and celebration of the body. Inside, flexible design elements allow groups to create the space with full agency, whether it is for a celebration or a pop-up retail space. As well as celebration, our network provides essential support and care through making. Here, the existing London College of Fashion workshop are used for an event called Stitches in Time, a collective weaving workshop which provides community support for black, brown and minority women who may be suffering domestic abuse or other injustices. The plan shows the float instigating this collaboration. The elements of the float spill out into the public front. The workshop is happening inside the London College of Fashion and the collective weaving is displayed outside. Our network means that smaller queer and trans exclusive spaces exist in Hackney for separatist celebration and care, whilst the Straker Station is a space where queer and trans groups, activists and artists can choose to be visible and have an integral presence in their wider communities. In the station is a larger version of the structure used. It means that all groups can come together and collectively weave their languages and stories. The collective woven tapestries are displayed along with a community made fabric tree symbolising setting down new collective roots. Our next design proposal pays tribute to the once famous and vibrant Four Aces Club on Dalston Lane. Beyond the temporary occupation of space, our proposal looks at claiming back assets of community value as part of the land trust. In this instance, we look at the Four Aces float being used as part of the infrastructure to take over a commercial unit in its former site. The float dismantles into key areas such as a prominent archway, cloakroom, kids' parent dance floor and a bar. The rave is used as an alternative and underground occupation of space. It begins on digital platforms where users of the said apps will be alerted of the location of the rave. At the site of the rave, a motif would appear and people would begin to arrive, but they can also easily disperse as and when they would need to. The role of the hub would be to act as a base for the runnings of the resurgence of the four races. It would also host the pirate radio station, highlighting upcoming local Hackney artists in the scene. Our next intervention tackles reappropriating and distributing cultural artefacts and histories to create a landscape of culture that extends beyond the traditional museum model 
embracing the idea of spatial justice. Our float aims to communicate a more truthful historical account by having a mobile workshop that liberates the stolen artefacts and celebrates their return. As part of the float's journey, it travels to Hackney Town Hall, celebrating the return of cultural artefacts to their country's origin, as well as hosting workshops surrounding the hidden histories of the artefacts and cultures. Working in collaboration with the Museum of Homes, we are reappropriating its courtyard space. As part of our plan to subvert the symbolism expressed by colonial statues, which are currently dominant markers within our public space, Spaces, such as the statue of Robert Jeffrey at the Museum of the Homes. The ongoing story of the museum is depicted by a mural showing the past and present histories of the museum, celebrating the change in spatial dominance, as well as reintroducing the original intentions of the museum, which had a large focus on shared workshop spaces to help promote skilled craftsmanship. Items created within these workshops will be exhibited as part of our street interventions around Hackney, allowing the local community to be part of the curation process. Our street intervention reactivate an active public space by transforming them into information points using photography, murals and more. This becomes the Exploded Museum and these interventions are connected via a timeline started from the Museum of the Home. There are three types of interventions. First, high tackles transforming spaces that still display colonial statues to interactive exhibition spaces. The second type uncovers hidden story with Hackney Naming Hub to reflect on the contribution of a wider range of community to Hackney. For example, the Ayas were Asian nannies hired by colonial families during the passage from India to Britain. On arrival to Britain, they were abandoned. A shelter opened in 1901 at 26 King Edward Road. The Ayers were able to seek shelter and a return passage. The third tie works in collaboration with Hackney Museum. We propose to liberate its archive collection currently hidden out of the public eye by distributing the information throughout the street. To sustain this project financially, we are also distributing a series of souvenir shops to generate income. The Straker Station is a central location to stage regular exhibitions of works. It is a space for learning and sharing and respect between the different groups. We are bringing story of the past and present to the public realm. We aim to build on community resilience that can then assist our culture and voices to travel to location beyond Hackney. Our, our vision, vision for the, the future, future is a secure and growing network of community-owned spaces and interventions existing on different timescales to create a resilient and intersectional network for racial equity in the city. Thank you for listening.